Small and medium enterprises, SMEs, are the building blocks of any economy. The government of Guyana understands this and has been working to provide fertile ground for these types of businesses to spawn and grow. Many government initiatives are underway, but perhaps we are not aware of them. In this week's edition of Guyana 411, we highlight how government has been providing support via grant funding and soft loans and how these interventions have not only promoted micro and small scale enterprises, but more importantly, has opened opportunities for the disadvantaged and youths, in addition to stimulating community growth opportunities at the grassroots levels. This is Guyana 411. I am Tiffany Rogers. Thank you for joining us. The Sustainable Livelihood Development Initiative, SLED, is providing men and women with the training and resources they need to develop and sustain productive livelihoods in pursuit of economic opportunities. Anthony Seymour and Akim Williams are school dropouts. It was a challenge for them to earn an income to provide for themselves and family. Today, however, they have earned the respect of members of their community. They are able to generate a regular income through support from the Sustainable Livelihood Development or SLED initiative. I was with my dad helping in the farm and so on. In the meanwhile, helping around the yard, servicing bikes and so on. Yes, sir. And they brought you onto this um, the old boss project, I, I, I'm told it's called. How has that been for you? Um, what benefits, how has it benefited you? Well, it benefited me in a lot of ways. For instance, well, I wasn't, well, in doing business, well, I didn't have any knowledge or anything of the sort, but after getting onto the course and so on, I've gained a lot of knowledge. To open a business, to run it, things that you should do, different steps that you should take, and so on. I was bad, I would say, in the eyes of many. I was doing a lot of bad things, like a gang, a gang I was a part of, and stuff like that. But I did a course in electrical installation that I didn't get to follow through either. So, this guy actually gave me the opportunity to earn a certificate, you know, that actually has value in the eyes of people so as to make a living. Since 2015, the government through the Ministry of Communities has been implementing the SLED initiative. The community-based livelihood support program helps communities to sustainably utilize the resources available to them to boost their local economy. Pilot coordinator of the SLED initiative, Jason Fraser, explains. So essentially, um you have an NDC, uh, we want to know what resources are there, what type of infrastructure you have, what potential that, that NDC has um, in terms of human resources and natural resources and so on, and say, listen, this is what you have at your disposal. Let us come up with a short to medium to long-term plan of how you're going to exploit sustainably your resources to bring revenue to your region. So what we do, we go out first, the first step is to have an inventory of your resources. The second step is to sit down with the councillors and develop a strategic plan, costed. So you know how much um, taxes you need to try to, you know, <laughs> uh, generate to then put your plan into action. SLED works by distributing interest-free cash grants to registered groups and associations needing the economic boost to improve their economic enterprises. SLED also works with non-profit organizations like the Canadian-funded Caribbean Local Economic Development Project, CARILED, to provide training and capacity building to beneficiaries of the grant. Pilot coordinator of the SLED initiative, Jason Fraser, explained. Given the fact that, like I said, there's so many communities and, I mean, there's only so many feet that we have on the ground, so we decided it would be a better way to find a cooperative or, or, or organization that is already out there, that have these resources already on the ground. The Swine Producer Association is one of the registered groups that has benefited from the SLED initiative. At present, SLED is working with 32 farmers across the region. 
Through the Swine Producer Association, training on proper husbandry practice is provided. Farmers are also provided with pens and the quality livestock imported from Suriname. Money was provided to the association and they, in turn, provide the farmers with the pens and the livestock. The Swine Producer Association also works with Carrie-led to train the farmers. Chairman of the Swine Producer Association, Henry Anderson, says that this led investment could transform the pork industry in Guyana. For years, the swine sector had many challenges faced, some which we felt we could have never surmounted. Um, we recognized that one of the things to change that was to have quality breeding animals. And the SLED project allowed us to find what you call the Topics 40, which is a hybrid breeding animal that would produce quality piglets At, with large litters and allow the finishing part to be ready in five and a half months, yielding approximately 220 pounds. Secretary of the Swine Producer Association, Ovin Magarel, says there is need for better management of the industry. With improved breeds, okay, we, and, and proper management, we should be able to do better than what we were doing before. Um, we, we, we need to get to a situation where we are on par with uh, our Caribbean neighbors as well as Suriname. Um, basically, in Guyana here, we wean about between 22 to 24 piglets per, per year. We are looking with this new breeds to wean probably about 24 to 28 uh, piglets per year. SLED has also supported the Women for Change of Hope Tongue Region 5. For this mainly agro-processing enterprise of 22 women, SLED funding is making it possible for them to meet photosanitary measures necessary to expand an already thriving enterprise. Let's hear how the construction of a building with SLED funding of almost $3 million is making this possible. We weren't able to, to expand because we weren't up to the food and drug standard, and so we weren't able to, because one of the criteria we would have had to have a building to be certified. And so um, in the next couple of weeks, we are hoping to complete this building to be certified. We have already, we are in contact with food and drugs, and so we will be able to go for the field. Our main products are um, the green seasoning, and the pepper sauce. For now, we were on trials. We did like wines, we did like jams, we did like jellies. Um, one of the main things that will be happening before the year end is that we're going to focus on expanding the green seasoning and the pepper sauce. We're going to go into a semi large scale into the virgin coconut oil and the soap making. SLED is also working with the Skills and the Knowledge for Youth Employment, Sky Project, to support at-risk youths. Sky Chief of Party, Mark De Fiona Wills, explains that SLED supports the Be Your Own Boss component of the agency's work. And that component is to ensure that youth um, living in points where uh, employment is hard to come by, we work with them to assist them to actually start their own businesses and that is where we want to really really thank <laughs> ministry of communities under the sled funding for the uh, significant donation to be able to help and to date we've been able to help 88 youth start their own businesses under the sled funds youths like anthony seymour akim williams and tiffany peters through sky Anthony Seymour, Akeem Williams, and Tiffany Peters received $200,000 each from SLED to start their own small enterprises. Seymour invested in a tire shop, Williams in a honey production business, and the Peters in a broiler farm. I actually got a vision from working at a car center. So um, 
honey being around at the time in my house came to my mind why shouldn't I sell honey at the car center but at the time I didn't have the sufficient funds actually get everything that I wanted to but I did the training after being told by my uncle about it and this is me now with a very nice product that is very healthy unique in design since this is my label and not anybody else's and you know just looking to help people to go the healthy way but because that's um, a demand on markets mostly everybody would like to have chicken or want to eat chicken on a regular basis so I said to demand on market and where I'm living we do have um, persons on a large scale but I'm doing for persons mainly who would want to buy only like a one or a two or a three or four and not on a large scale something. To date, SLED has invested 20 million into Sky for the Be Your Own Boss project. This funding has also allowed for Sky to provide capacity building training to youths in skills and business administration. It also allowed for the agency to pair the youths with a life coach. Sky Life Coach Alaric Wilder explains how this works. We work with the youth, we don't just release them. The, the Be Your Own Boss component really entails um, six months of following up and, and mentoring, continuous mentoring and, and um, you know, checking in to ensure that you know, all goes well. Wilder has been working with Seymour and Williams. Leon France is a life coach responsible for working with youths on the East Bank of Demerara. He has been working with Tiffany Peters. France talks about working with Peters. We've had challenges, but she would have benefited from our work readiness training within the period, the five weeks training. And on completion of that, we had her be her own boss training, which was two weeks. And she was successful in doing up her own business plan. And as a result, um, she got the um, kit, which is the cost of 200,000. 200, and today, she's a proud owner of um, Big Peace Poetry. In 2015, the government allocated a total of $115 million for the SLED initiative. Of that total, $74 million went into projects and another $15 million into capacity building. These actions have transformed, for the better, the lives of several Guyanese. The sky has provided me with the knowledge and the skills to be a better person in terms of actually helping me practice um, interacting with other people and stuff like that and provide me with certain knowledge. So I'm grateful to them for that. Ever since I've joined the program, it's benefit me a lot and I would be glad if persons my age would could get onto this program and do something off of their own. Actually I feel that's the best thing for any and everybody because you wouldn't have to work under anybody and follow anybody rules and regulations. You just be your own boss and live up to your own standards. And The Small Business Bureau of the Ministry of Business is also making it easier for micro and small entrepreneurs to attain their dreams. Small and micro entrepreneurs can access one of two programs to fund their dreams of owning their own businesses. Luana Peer benefited from a small business grant. I applied for a loan uh, with a small, small interest loan and I was able to get it and we were able to put in the grooming parlor and actually move here because this wasn't the first thought to do this in the mall and um, so I decided to venture out and it was just supposed to be grooming alone and then I decided no I'll just put in some pet products livestock products some livestock equipment cater for additional just not dogs and cats but birds and turtles I have here a pet shop and grooming parlor it's um, the grooming parlor is probably, I would say, it is the first of its type in Guyana. We do bathing and um, uh, haircuts, hairstyles. Even though it's, it's just making the pets look nice, it also is looking at the overall health of the animal. So it's just not, maybe the owners may miss some things while we can be able to look at it closely, see maybe the condition of the skin, if they have takes, fleas, any uh, parasites, so even lumps in the skin, and then we can make 
let that be known to the, to the owner. I advise them to take the animal to the veterinarian. One of the funding programs is the United Nations Development Program Fund that is provided by the government of Chile. It provides 5,000 U.S. dollars. Kelvin Sulal, a beneficiary of this fund, constructed a shade house for his cash crops. Why we're using the shade house is because due to the present rainfall, um, your crops are not being damaged. Because if you plant without the plastic, um, you, a lot of crops will be damaged. That's why you plant under the shade house. And the plant grow more healthy, more bigger, and bear more fruits. This shade house culture or protected agriculture system is the way to go. Because presently, during this high intensity rainfall, um, cash crop farmers in Region 5 had a complete loss. So with this system now, um, crops like tomatoes and pepper, this region actually grow a lot of tomatoes and sweet pepper. And these crops are now protected and the farmer, um, Kelvin, could actually obtain some, a higher price for his crop. Protected agriculture is one of the adaptation process through, the, the, um, to, through climate change. And um, this is one of the, the advantages of, um, of protected system of agriculture. The other funding program is the Micro Small Enterprise Development, MSED. This is funded by the Guyana Red Plus Investment Fund under the Low Carbon Development Strategy. Gillian Edwards, the officer in charge of the Small Business Bureau, explains how MSED works. Under the MSED project, we also have a grant facility where they can access small businesses again. But the more micro businesses we tend to put under this window can access up to 1500 US the equivalent of same to retool, to start businesses, so we have work and capital requests, requests for equipment and things like that. Um, why we tend to put the more micro businesses on the, that um, the grant program, basically the whole idea is if you can borrow, we push you in that direction, you can meet the bank's requirements. And for the grantees, basically are those who basically the bank would find as maybe a little too high risk or they are testing ideas. There's not one yet, as yet that might be ready for, you know, a loan repayment and a fixed monthly, um, you know, commitment. So we tend to push those towards the grant programs. If it is an established business, of course, who basically wants to retool, you can also fit into the grant program. MSED makes funds available either by way of grant or a loan through Republic Bank, GBTI, or IPED. There's certain things material in terms of tools, important role for the work because this make work easier, the tools. For example, this is one of it, right? This here, so it's for sizes. Now this could give you a different size. When the slip horse is already set up, you put this inside and you get the measurement. When you get the measurement, now that is the fit, so it make work easy. Before I even got this here, so in the different sizes, so what I had to do is to use an extension. All the time it just be a little difficult because you got to know how to adjust directly. You understand? But this here, so now is size to fit. The key role is for me how for expand in terms of how this small business can help me out. This business directly dealing with leather. I strictly manufacture things directly with leather. And most, mostly producing by handmade. Because as you could see here, so these things here, what I'm doing here, at, this is handmade. This is nano machine. So people obviously just think it's machine, but when you tell them no, it's handmade. Each, every design and everything that is on it here was done by hand. I went through a lot of training, you know, I got certificate and saw the convention center, how to deal with customers wise and set the thing, business wise, you know, how to react to customers, how to approach, how to grow, how to talk to people, you know, how to grow the business, how, what, what you could do for being in a mannerly way, you know, so people could observe that you are a businessman, you know. Yeah, and how, this kind of thing. It helped me a lot because I could be able to respond back to people in a better way, and then you, you, deal, you get a lot to do in terms of your personality, addressing code and thing, how you could affect it by customers, how you know, how you could send an affect like. You get two person they can come here, so from Canada to um export in, in terms of letter craft, one of them come by me and spend a whole day. And that was very good because they, they was very, very useful because these people are export concerning letter for producing. For example, you see that mass there? The little woman from Canada make that and left that here. What she, what the Canada leaf is also pan the ball, you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So training has been, been a key role for me. But more importantly, as I tell you, finance could be a little problem too because remember, once you want to expand business, capitalism us. Without capital, you can't do nothing. You can't move. 
What we do is facilitate um, loans to those institutions. Where we come in is to do the pre-screening, um, to make sure they can tap into loans at preferred rates in all instances. Um, in the case of the two banks, the maximum rate is 6%. And um, we also offer credit guarantees. The whole idea is to make it cheaper for small businesses to borrow and as well um, to provide support in the usual area which is of concern, the collateral. So we provide a credit guarantee up to 40%. So that would ease their collateral burden because in turn they only have to secure a 60%. Maple Singh, another MSED recipient, is moving her business to the next level. This is an establishment, it's a daycare and a place school right now. We're hoping to become a nursery by September. We applied for the grant. We went to the training. They showed us how to do the business plan. We applied for the grant. We were able to be fortunate enough to get it. So before the grant, we were actually housed in my home, a part of the area. But after we had gotten the grant, we were able to open this side so that the school is able to be here. So it did help. In terms of education, it was really good because their training program was good. So you were able to learn a lot of stuff. So with that done and being able to get the financial benefit from it, it was able to open a lot of opportunities because we started with two students and we're at 18 now and this was just a year ago. And I'm, I'm not sure that would have happened if I was still in that small space. So the grant was definitely a godsend. The children take part in everything. They had their float parade, they had their culture day, they keep up with everything. And they, we try to keep them knowledgeable of their country because we want them to grow up with pride in their country. So basically that's our focus. But everything they do is true play. Small businesses will soon have access of up to 20% of all government procurement contracts as stipulated in the Procurement Act. These and other measures available seek to boost micro and small entrepreneurs countrywide. Small businesses are a critical component of and a major contributor to the strength of local economies as they present new employment opportunities, especially to people who may not have an opportunity to be employed otherwise. They also bring growth and innovation to the community where the business is established and contribute to the national economy by paying taxes. Improving the lives of women across the country is one of the goals of the government. We look at some of the lending programs available to female single parents and women in the hinterland. Female single parents are given the opportunity to improve their businesses and better their lives through the Women of Worth WOW program. Started in 2010, the WOW program has since benefited over 1,000 female single parents between the ages of 18 to 59, who were able to access loans ranging from $100,000 to $200,000. The Ministry of Social Protection, in collaboration with the Guyana Bank for Trade and Industry, GBTI, provides these loans on a needs basis. The loans are a major boost to single parent business women who have difficulty accessing funding. For Althea Stacy Hollingsworth, being able to access a loan through WOW allowed her small grocery shop to become more competitive. I had certain things that I could not afford to buy, like the customer wanted. And since I received the loan, I could buy like bar milk, flour, sugar, and add a, add, a, add a lot of things to the shop. Applying for the loan is an easy process. WOW's microcredit field officer, Monica Hackshaw, explains. But basically they come in, we do a preliminary interview with them to find out, basically we need to find out if they're single indeed, and if they have these school age children. For now, we're expanding business only, so they have to be involved in business for a year or more. The loan is in two, it's twofold. You have the ministry, more local, the social aspect of it, and the bank on the business aspect of it. So then we refer them to the bank, send their information to the bank with a cover letter. The bank will not entertain them without our reference letter. Since being approved for her loan six months ago, Hollingsworth says she can now better provide for her family. Well, it helped me a lot to like buy more stuff so that I can get a lot more customers so that it would make it easier for me to afford things for my children. The bank assists the women with a business plan before approving a loan. 
Once approved, recipients have one year to repay the non-collateral loan, which has an interest rate of only 6%. So then the ministry takes over again where we monitor the business. We go back out there and we, we see what they actually do with the money because all in the effort of trying to reduce the defaulting rate. Single parent of two and a beverage vendor, Michelle Jones, says she was able to expand her stock since receiving the loan. It has benefited me a lot. We have improved on our stocks that we sell on a normal basis. Seeing the change the WOW program makes in the lives of families also brings satisfaction to those who help administer the program. It's a good initiative because let me tell you, when you go out there and you go to uh, single parents and you go to their homes and you visit their business and you really see these people need help, right? And, because, and for me, it's a very good initiative because you can see the change. You can literally see the change. To date, 18 women have been approved for a WOW loan from the $6 million which has been allocated for this program in December 2015. Meanwhile, women's group in Regions 1 and 8 have benefited from a $4 million grant. For 2016, actually, two women's group were given funding. One for a poultry farm in um, Region 1 and in Region 8, um, they want to finish building their craft shop. 20 women from Monkey Mountain are also expected to be supported by small grants for the planting of kitchen gardens. The produce from these gardens will support the school's hot meal program. So I realized that um, that the children need to eat healthy food, you need your grains. Um, we have to encourage them to, uh, to plant grains, so I thought about the kitchen gardens where um, like a family can plant three different species of grains and another one plant, you know, you, you, so that everybody, everybody doesn't plant the same thing. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the year, of course, they will sell their greens now on a daily basis to the school because the school cooks every day a hot meal for the children. And it would be nice if they eat greens every day a little bit, even if it's a, as a side dish. Minister Lowe says she will be working with the Small Business Bureau and the Ministry of Business to evaluate the provision of loans valued at $50,000 for the women. The ministry, meantime, will provide the women with training to enable proper preparation of the vegetable from growing to cooking. The Community Infrastructure Improvement Project, SIP, partners with local authorities to deliver new and improved infrastructure in communities across Guyana. It creates jobs and helps to improve the quality of life for residents. SIP has been rehabilitating roads, bridges and culverts in underprivileged areas on a needs basis. Requests are made by neighborhood democratic councils. Buxton, a village located on the east coast of Demerara, is one of the communities that has benefited. A road in the village was rehabilitated on the SIP. George, a Buxton resident, talks about the benefits of the road. This road was very bad prior to now, you know. But um, since the work has been done, you can see for yourself that the road is extremely good now. It's one of the best roads we have in Buxton, actually. You know. um, safety features, definitely, it's great. Speed humps are there. This is a road with lots of children because it's, as you know, it's a, it's a village road, you know. It has lots of children here. Safety features are great. In terms of accessibility, more people use this road today than used it yesterday. Simply because of, um, this is being the newest road in, in, in town, you know, the newest road in Buxton. More and more people are using it now. Dovlin, a shop owner in Buxton, extended thanks to the contractors for doing a good job and was all smiles when she said that her friends from Georgetown complimented the road. We had road before, but in as soon as like a month or two, we started getting potholes and all of that. But since this road has been finished, since it finished doing, it's still smooth, no um, potholes. It is well done. You could see it's very high. I commend the government for doing this work and the contractor did a very good work. I've seen other roads that was done and I could say this is the best that I have seen. My friends came from Georgetown and they complimented this road. They said they, their road was done as well, but it's not this well done. A 
apart from providing proper infrastructure, SIP is also providing jobs for residents of the communities in which the work is ongoing. In 2015, SIP created employment for over 500 persons. In Linden and Lethem, a total of 300 persons were employed to do community infrastructure works. Residents of the west coast of Burbese also benefited from community employment. They helped with the rehabilitation of Carmichael Street at Number 28 Village. The once deplorable pathway is now in a good condition. Kelton highlights how useful the road has been to the residents. Well, the road was in a very deplorable state. It was hardly being used because of the state it was in. And presently, now that it has been done, we really appreciate it being done and it helps us a whole lot because people are far back on the line. They could not have accessed certain things because of the state the road was in. And now that it has been done, we are pleased about it. We're really pleased. We've never had such a good street in a long time. A footpath bridge was also constructed with the help of members of the community. The bridge links Claybrick Road to Masjid Road in Bell West Housing Scheme Region 3. Raj Day explains how the bridge is helping members of the community. Yeah, it's very useful. People crossing, walkers, school children, you know, old people, young people. It's very useful because most time the, the cars more run in Bell West. They don't come over here to bring passengers, understand? So we just got to get a vehicle over there, then we just got to walk across Claybrook Road. Because transportation hardly come in Claybrook Road. The SIP Community Involvement Initiative has seen over 50 public cemeteries being cleaned and cleared. Today, persons can access burial plots of their loved one in Rose Hall Tongue, Canefield, Bushlot, and the LaBelle Alliance. In 2016, $1.76 billion was budgeted for SIP. So far, the program has started 17 projects. A few of the projects include the construction of revetment in Bartica, rehabilitation of a multipurpose centre in Region 2, and the construction of a bridge linking Haswell to Area R, Port Morant. These works are being carried out to create cleaner, safer, and healthier communities. The Community Infrastructure Improvement Project has directly and indirectly benefited thousands of citizens through improved access and aesthetics in communities as well as financial benefits through employment opportunities countrywide. These are the funding sources available from government. However, for each of these, a professional business plan is required, which can be obtained from the respective ministries. This concludes this week's edition of Guiana 411. For these and other stories, visit Gina's website. You'll join us again next week for another edition of Guiana 411. Thank you for watching.